Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. Today is the 15th time since the virus came to our country some five months ago that I've come to provide you with the status of our coordinated efforts to defeat COVID-19. Fellow Ghanaians, as of 24th July, the number of active cases i.e. persons with the virus, stood at 3,307. As of Saturday, 15th August, three weeks later, the number of active cases stands at 1,847. This is a clear indication that government policies are working. Currently, there are no recorded COVID-19 cases in the Northeast, Savannah, Upper East, and Upper West regions. And I charge their residents to do everything possible to maintain that situation. Greater Accra, Ashanti, Central, Eastern, and Western continue to be the regions with the highest number of active cases. Thus far, a total of 40,000 567 persons have recovered from the virus. This means our recovery rate has improved from 89.5% to 95.1% in three weeks. Our death rate continues massively to be low at 0.5%. I know many still ask whether our borders especially our international airport, Kotoka International Airport, will be open. Under my instructions, the Ministry of Aviation, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, and the Ghana Airports Company Limited have been working with the Ministry of Health and its agencies to ascertain our readiness to reopen our airport. I want to ensure that we are in a position to test every single passenger that arrives in the country to avoid the spread of the virus. The outcome of that exercise will show us the way and determine when we can reopen our border by air. I'm hoping that by God's grace, we'll be ready to do so by the 1st of September. Until further notice, our borders by air, land and sea remain closed to human traffic. For Ghana residents stranded abroad, special dispensation will be continue to be given for their evacuation back to Ghana, where they will be subjected to the mandatory quarantine and safety protocols. Beaches, pubs, cinemas, and nightclubs are still to remain closed until further notice. The limit on the number of persons who can attend conferences, workshops, and award events has now been lifted, subject to the maintenance of social distancing amongst participants, fresh air ventilation of the premises, and a two-hour limit for each session. I know that the pandemic has adversely affected many lives and livelihoods. It is for this reason the government has implemented several measures such as free water and electricity and funding to support small businesses and tax relief amongst others to cushion the effect of the pandemic. We are not providing freebies. We're providing critical help to households, families and businesses in the midst of this pandemic because we care. It is my conviction that in times of crises, it is the duty of a responsible and sensitive government to protect the population and provide relief. Fellow Ghanaians, let us remember at all times that the faced opening up of our country continues to put an obligation and responsibility on each one of us to remain vigilant and respect the enhanced hygiene, 
mask wearing and social distancing protocols that have become part and parcel of our daily routine. They are proving to be effective, so let us employ them wholeheartedly. That is the way we can restore as quickly as possible the blessings of normalcy for which we all yearn. There is no room for complacency. We must be very much on our guard because some countries have experienced spikes after recording major achievements in containing the spread of the virus. We should not go down that road. Social distancing, enhanced hygiene and wearing of masks are obligatory for each one of us. We can do it. So let us continue to work hard towards attaining our goal. This too shall pass, for the battle is the Lord's. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention, and good night.